Surprise! <laughs> I'm hosting again. Um, Laura and Clayton are getting ready for the next presentation, and so it is my honor to introduce to you Miss Hysteria. Miss Hysteria is a work of historical fiction based on the life of Louise Glaze, a talented actress with a traumatic past who performed symptoms of hysteria for Dr. Charcot's infamous neurology presentations at the Saltpetriere Institution in Paris. It's by Ben Ziedman and Laura Schein, AKA Ziedman and Schein, who've written songs for Disney, Paramount, and many more. Please put your hands together for Miss Hysteria. Okay, hello everybody. <laughs> so, what do you know about hysteria? Well, in 1876, according to Dr. Jean-Martin Charcot, the Napoleon of neurology, hysteria was defined as a weakness of the mind, particularly the female mind. And how did he get the whole world on board with this? Well, he put on a show a show in which he put his female patients on display, presenting their hysterical episodes to large audiences. And his star was a young woman named Louise Glaze, AKA Miss Hysteria. So now there's a good deal of debate amongst historians as to whether these women were directed into acting hysterical. And so in this musical, which is a work of historical fiction, our story begins with Louise Glaze as a struggling actress in Paris who desperately needed a job. Act one, 1876. Louise is working as a waitress in a Parisian cafe. Total chaos erupts when she gets into a heated fight with her handsy boss and accidentally spills wine on one of the customers who happens to be Dr. Jean-Martin Charcot, head of neurology at the Sepultier Hospital. Having just been told that his hysteria project uh, funding was pulled, a light bulb goes off in his mind when he witnesses Louise's theatrics. Louise storms out, uh, storms out of the cafe and down a block filled with fancy Parisian shops all closed for the night. And she's eager to light the spark. Oh yeah, um, right after a quick shop lifting spree. <laughs> Signs are all 
saying no going back This is the moment just have to own it my future Skies will be bluer Don't fade to black There's a powerful voice that keeps pulsing inside Saying I've only begun Time to take my bow It's my story now I am not So, Louise ends up in jail. Yes, but not for long. Dr. Uh, Charcot shows her, shows suddenly, um, and offers her a get out of jail free card. <laughs> well, not exactly free. Right. He brings her to his department at the Sepultier and promises her that if she will play along with his Big Hysteria project, she will become a star. He can see it. <laughs> what do you see? I don't see anything. Close your eyes. Okay. What do you see now? Nothing. My eyes are closed. Breathe. Isn't that a given? Okay, never mind, open your eyes. Let me tell you what I see. In my eyes, I see you rising like a phoenix. Can you see it? Um, no. Eyes on prize, release the ties. The sky's the limit. Take it in, begin to believe that you will find it if you just allow. No. It's a fact to be exact, your greatest act is starting now. And my purpose is showing you how. Feel your neurons exploding and your heart re-encoding every step of decision. You're designing your vision. You'll be leading the dance, you'll have the world. A trance and I should know, oh I should know. Picture walls you'll be breaking, all is yours for the taking. You're ahead and you know it, you're the ship and you show it. Grab the chance by the tail, take your fear, you won't fail. So let go, take it slow. Don't say no, say hello. I won't let go. Nothing can stop you going straight to the top. You're in a class of your own. You'll be the queen on the throne. Leave your old life behind. You trust in me, and I promise you will grow and grow and grow. You're the star of my show.
Alice is on board, obviously, and she and Shoko begins producing the big hysteria show. But they can't do it alone. Shoko hires a slightly uptight designer named Andre. <laughs> and a vibrant young choreographer named Jules. <laughs> Shoko also takes on a new assistant, a brilliant young neurotic student named Sigmund Freud. <laughs> this part is true, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, more, uh, more on him later. They also assemble a diverse cast of women who all reside at the Sopatriere. The cast includes Genevieve, a former chambermaid, Blanche, a former lady of the night, <laughs> and Boo, <laughs> a rumored murderer. So, rehearsals are a mess, of course, and it's the night before the first show. Everyone is nervous. In the dormitory, no one can sleep. Louise uh, has an idea. She encourages them all to share a moment in their lives which they felt over the moon. I remember it was late July and my mother pushed me on a yellow swing set. It was perfect, felt like I could fly as our laughter echoed through the summer sunset.
So, back to Freud. <clears throat> he and Louise become friends, close friends. She shares a recurring dream with him that keeps dancing in her mind. But the story she tells is not the whole story. Hysteria show is a hit. The women pass around a newspaper, reading their rave reviews. Genevieve excitedly tells the women that she's sure her fiance will be at the next performance. But when she looks closer at the paper, she suddenly goes white while reading a wedding announcement for her fiance and another woman. She flees the room in tears. Yeah. In another room, Sigmund Freud is alone, writing a passionate letter. We're not sure to whom the letter is addressed, but we assume it's Louise. Down the hall, Andre and Jules are a tad tipsy. <clears throat> As they celebrate in a small, sweaty room, it all starts to feel just a tad how, just a little bit, how do, no, how do, how do I say it? Hot. <laughs> the moon is all aglow for you, my Juliet. As constant as the moment that we met Oh, these thoughts of you, I find Bring dreams to ease my mind So I can sleep at night Forgive me 
inform my thoughts. I need to call a priest. Confess how much you make me want to feast. Oh, if only I could dare to lay my feelings bare. Then I could sleep at night. Did you say something? No, no. I wish you take my hand, then we could fall and safely land. Maybe our stars are crossed, sending a signal that we're Louise finds Genevieve standing in front of a window, about to jump. She takes her in her arms and saves her life. Throughout the course of Act Two, as the hysteria show gains popularity and Charcot gains more financial validation, Louise begins to question the ethics of the whole endeavor she's got wrapped up in. And she starts to see Charcot for the megalomaniac that he really is. And although her name is in the papers, like she always dreamed, she's famous for being a mad woman and responsible for promoting false truths about women. And then Louise discovers a pile of love letters from Freud to his fiancée. So with the help of her newfound chosen family, let's just say that Louise truly does light the spark and burn it all down, stepping into her true calling and setting herself and the women of the Solpetriere free. Fin. Fin. <laughs> and that was musical for the night. Let's have all the cast, all the crew, all the writers up here, 